This is our fifth stop. And what we're trying to do is underscore the failure of the Biden-Harris-Casey policies. And I say Casey because uh, Senator Casey, my opponent, the guy I'm running against, he's voted for Biden-Harris 99% of the time. So whatever they say, he's done. And he'll do that again if uh, Kamala Harris is president. Pennsylvania families, small businesses, seniors, farmers are all suffering from this economy. And because of this weak leadership in Washington, Pennsylvania families and small businesses are really hurting. And uh, it's really due to, to some very liberal, extreme policies that Kamala Harris has been pushing and Bob Casey's been voting for. And the most notable is, is spending. Five trillion dollars of new spending. So the spending's been crazy, and that's what's pushed up inflation. That's what's pushed up uh, the incredible prices of groceries and everything in our economy. They've also supported policies that have blocked mobility, made it harder to get ahead, made it harder uh, for folks to realize the American dream. And, and this administration has shown weakness in the face of China's economic warfare on American manufacturers in particular. And the results of this are, are pretty clear. You can't deny the results. Overall inflation is up 20% since Biden and Harris and Casey came into, uh, into office. Gas is up by 50%. As all of you know, we all know, groceries are up 22% and rents up 23%. So this is killing working families because wages haven't kept up with prices. It's, it's pretty simple. So people are getting squeezed. But it's not just reckless spending. It's, it's the poor, weak leadership on failed energy policies. And you guys obviously are, are most affected by this. These policies are raising prices and they're crushing families with high utility bills. Pennsylvania, although we're blessed with all these energy resources, Pennsylvania is the 13th most expensive state in the country for the cost of electricity for consumers. In fact, electricity prices in our Commonwealth are up 34%. 34% since Biden, Harris, and Casey restarted the war on fossil fuels in 2021. So think about that. For manufacturers, these great manufacturing jobs, that means higher costs that they pass on to consumers. For families, that means that it's harder and harder for people to afford their utility bill. And when we talk about the Harris-Casey war on fossil fuels, we're talking about some very specific policies. Banning fracking. That's what Kamala Harris says she wants to do. That's what Bob Casey will support. It's the LNG export ban. It's the pushing of the clean power plan, which you guys know well, that would raise electricity prices in our Commonwealth by 50%. And it would put plants like this one right here in jeopardy. They've embraced green energy mandates, which are making America more dependent on China. You all probably know this, but what the EPA's done under Biden, Harris, and Casey, they've mandated that by 2032, 70% of all new light vehicles will be electric. No combustion pickup trucks, 30, only 30% 30 will be combustion ended. 70% by 2032, that's eight years away. This is horrific mismanagement of our energy. It's killing working families. Pennsylvanians are tired of it, uh, and we need new leadership. Today we find ourselves at a political cross crossroads where the livelihoods of this region are often caught in the crosshairs. The mining and energy sectors are frequently painted in the negative light but what many people fail to understand is that what our current political officials are fighting for, uh, fighting against, is precisely what they claim to want. They demand green steel and cleaner energy, and that's exactly what we're delivering right here and right now. Unfortunately, the poor leadership in Washington has failed to recognize our essential role in both the green steel movement and the shift to clean, reliable energy. Here in Pennsylvania, strong leaders like Dave understand the challenges we face. They recognize the price of poor leadership in industry like ours. Challenges like economic upheaval, job loss, community shuttering, and higher prices. A great leader like Dave doesn't just know what we do here. They understand what our product means, where our product goes, and how it can contribute to a cleaner, more vibrant future. Now, Pennsylvania is the key to America's carbon future. The anthracite reserve beneath our feet 
is the only anthracite deposit in the United States and one of the largest reserves in the, in the whole world. And we're just beginning to tap into it. That's in addition to natural gas, oil, rare minerals, and you name it. Bob Casey and the Harris administration do not want to unlock Pennsylvania's natural resource. They want to keep our economic freedom buried underground by subjecting our industry to endless government reviews and burden, burdensome red tape. They have engaged in an all-out war on the mining and industry, energy industry, which means they want to take the, jo the jobs away from the hardworking employees here, including the 500-plus employees working across our family of companies. That means everyone standing behind me, our livelihoods and our communities are threatened. But it doesn't stop there. The war on fossil fuels has far-reaching impacts. It hurts independent truck drivers, equipment salespeople, drillers, engineers, and unfortunately for Pennsylvania steel workers. Dave understands that anthracite is key ingredient to the green steel movement. Something our anthracite helps to power. Our anthracite is fundamental to the environmental responsive, environmentally responsible means of manufacturing steel through something called the electric arc furnace. This method of steel making is sweeping the globe and the US. We must ensure that we have leaders like Dave McCormick that want us at the forefront of that movement. The steel industry is not just our family's largest customer. It's one of the nation's most critical national security assets. Steel is the backbone of our defense sector, strengthening our tanks, our ships, our aircraft, and our submarines. It's the backbone of our infrastructure, supporting our bridges, our railways, our highways, our power grids, our buildings, our hospitals, our schools. It's the backbone of our supply chain resiliency, reducing reliance on cheap imported steel. And it's the backbone of our energy independence, using steel to continue building vital power plants like this one behind us. If we give up on coal, we give up on steel. And that's where we are headed with the Kamala Harris and Bob Casey. They've given up and want to shut the door on Pennsylvania and its resources. The price of poor leadership is the loss of economic stability in counties like Schuylkill, the erosion of our culture, the end of future generations like me and my cousins behind me and the coal mining families, and ultimately a threat to our national security. I've spoken a lot about our world-class resource and what it means for Pennsylvania. So now let's shift our focus back to reliable, clean energy. I'd like to turn it back over to Alex Brush, GM of both of our power plants, who will explain our role as a reliable, clean energy producer for the Commonwealth and highlight the importance of strong leadership and policies that will allow us to continue providing affordable electricity for Pennsylvania and families and businesses. Thank you. The Rich Family Company's power plants, Gilbert & Power and Schuylkill Energy, are each dispatched as 80 megawatt, base-loaded, must-run capacity resources for the local grid. We're a reliable, clean source of energy that controls all regulated emissions well within permitted levels, generating power using state-of-the-art combustion technology. We maintain a near-flawless environmental record, and our facilities are even designated by the EPA as low emitters for a variety of emissions, including particulates and mercury. A benefit unique to our industry and our industry alone is that we remediate our historically damaged local environment. We make significant improvements to land, water, and air simply as a function of operating. In addition to the 168 megawatts of total electric capacity, which by the way is enough to power about 140,000 homes, between them over their lifetimes, our two plants have remediated in excess of 65 million tons of abandoned waste coal. Together, along with the efforts of our affiliates, we have used over 40 million tons of Pennsylvania certified beneficial use ash, which is a byproduct of our process, in which we've reclaimed hundreds of acres of abandoned mine land. Upon completion of that reclamation, the restored land is revegetated with plant life forever consuming carbon dioxide. Green New Deal policies ironically threaten our environmental successes. These successes are made possible through the dedicated efforts of nearly 200 full-time employees, many of whom are standing here today. 
as well as the fueling, reclamation, and logistics activities that support these plants. Our industry is routinely jeopardized by the pendulum swings of politics. We're villainized for greenhouse gas emissions and continuously face ever more stringent regulatory standards. All of this is ironically counterproductive to our environmental mission, which is eliminating abandoned refuse coal and reclaiming the local environment. Our facilities have always adapted to tightening regulatory pressures. However, at a certain point, you can only divide a number so many times before it becomes effectively zero. The constant steady addition to the electric grid's demand, coupled with the retirement of fossil assets, leaves PJM with a tighter and tighter margin to adequate capacity, a warning that the grid operator has re reiterated many, many times. We as an industry, we as a company, and we as individual employees are excellent stewards of the environment. The Appalachian Re Region Independent Pro Power Producers Association, or RIPA, is the trade group organization that represents our industry. It is comprised of members like us, members who work hand in hand with everyone from state and federal regulators to large and local environmental nonprofits. We deserve public policies that promote and encourage our industry's environmental progress, not keep us guessing, or even worse, threaten us, as those do that are proposed for carbon and particulate matter. Pennsylvania has always had a history of supporting our industry's environmental objectives. Even the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection contends that our industry is the only real solution for the abandoned waste coal problem. We need a return to common sense in the federal regulatory climate, especially as it pertains to how policies impact environmentally friendly, small independent power production facilities like ours at the Gilbert and Power Station here today and Schuylkill Energy Resources, our sister facility, as well as the entire coal refuse to energy facility. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time and hand it back over to Dave.